What is going on, fight fans and full-time family? It is time to give our predictions and break down the main card for this weekend's fight card, which is, of course, headlined by former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley taking on the streaking Doreen Hall Gilbert Burns. This is going to be a welterweight banger, and I'm predicting a knockout. And you can see my predictions there. We'll jump into the main event first. This is going to be a five-fight main card. I'm taking Tyron Woodley versus Gilbert Burns, man. I know Gilbert Burns is currently riding a seven-fight winning streak, and he's coming off of a finish over Damian Maya. If you look at Damian Maya's recent fights, he fought the best. He's only lost the best welterweights in the world before he fought Gilbert Burns. That was Usman Woodley and Covington, and none of them were able to finish him. Gilbert Burns was able to come in there versus Damian Maia and get the finish, which is something that none of the best welterweights in the world were able to do, which was extremely impressive to add to his winning streak. But now he's taking on the former welterweight champion, Tyron Woodley, who is one of the greatest welterweights of all time. If you look at his resume all the way through, I'm talking about back from strike force. He's been fighting the best guys in the world and he's been passing the test. Say what you want. Has he had a couple boring performances? Sure, but who hasn't? He's also had some thunderous knockouts. Josh Koscheck, Robbie Lawler, Tyron Woodley is dangerous, and he's go trying to come back for what is his. He's been a little distracted in the past with his uh, music and TMZ entertainment gigs, and I believe he's got a show coming up with The Rock, but he lost his title, and I think that that means nothing but dedication when it comes to fight camp for Tyron Woodley. I think he's going to come in with not champ camp, but champ camp. <laughs> he's just not the champ. He's going to have a hell of a camp, though. Uh, Tyron Woodley, man, always been a notorious for being a hard worker. Trains with the best fighters in the world, American top team. I mean, what more can I say? I'm going with the chosen one, Tyron Woodley. Moving on to the co-main event of the evening, we've got a heavyweight bout between Blagoy Ivanov and Augusto Sakai. This was a tough one for me to pick. Um, I, I do believe it's a toss-up here, but I'm going to give the edge to Augusto Sakai. He's currently streaking. I think he's riding like a three. I, I got it pulled up, uh, actually, before I just start talking. Uh, he's 14-1 and one currently. And Blagwa Ivanov does have a lot more experience, but Augusto Sakai is riding a five-fight winning streak, most recently a finish in the first round over Marcin Tibora, and before that, he also finished Chase Sherman, and both of these in the UFC, and fought to a split decision with Andre Arlovsky. So he's streaking right now. This is going to be his toughest opponent he's fought to date. 18-3 and Blagoy Ivanov, who fights out of American Kickboxing Academy, which makes it really hard for me, honestly, to pick against Ivanov. I almost wanted to go with Ivanov here, and I probably should, but it's a toss-up for me. Um, Ivanov is coming off of a loss to Derek Lewis, which was a split decision. Before that, he beat Tai Tuivasa and Ben Rothwell and lost to Junior Dos Santos. It's really hard for me to pick Augusto Sakai here. I don't know why the fuck I, I lean toward him because in my head, I'm, I'm leaning toward Ivanov, honestly. Oh, it's a toss-up, guys, but I don't want to go back on my pick here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to pause the video. Fuck it, guys. It's a toss-up, man. I'm going with Sakai. May the best man win. Um, but... Ivanov probably should win. He trains out of American Kickboxing Academy. Um, hey, it's a toss-up, though. Sakai is definitely dangerous, and it's a heavyweight fight, so you know how those go. Anybody can go down at any moment, especially uh, if Ivanov isn't able to utilize any wrestling, but um, he may be able to get there, so we'll see. That's a fight, a good fight there. I'm taking Sakai. Moving on to Kevin Holland versus Daniel Rodriguez. This is a guy I really I'm fond of, man. Kevin Holland. Um, he's he's Dana White called him Big Mouth if you remember on Dana White Contender Series because he was talking like throughout the whole fight, but he still ended up getting a win. And he didn't get the UFC contract that night, but he did get the contract when Tiago Santos needed a short notice opponent. And he was willing to come in short notice, fight Tiago Santos when no one else would on short notice. And being a UFC newcomer, he was did not get finished, which was extremely impressive. He looked good in that fight. He did lose, but it was an it was an impressive loss. Um, 
And then after that, he went on to win three fights in a row in the UFC before losing to Brandon Allen. And most recently, he literally just fought this month against Anthony Hernandez um, on May 16th. I'm recording this video on May 25th, so this guy's going to have two weeks in between fights. He went from fighting Anthony Hernandez, and he finished him in the first round. Extremely impressive finish, and Anthony Hernandez was an experienced guy. Anthony Hernandez has been fighting mixed martial arts since he was 16 years old. A lot of amateur fights before turning pro, and he got finished in the first round by Kevin Holland. That was extremely impressive. Now Kevin Holland's going to be fighting Daniel Rodriguez. Daniel Rodriguez is 11 and 1, but and he's he's honestly, I mean he's going to be the toughest guy Kevin Holland has fought. But I think Kevin Holland can get it done. Daniel Rodriguez is coming off of a second round standing guillotine finish over Tim Means, but before that he he wasn't fighting anybody on Kevin Holland's level. Before Tim Means, he fought a guy that was 15 and 26. I mean he was fighting guys that were 7 and 2, 17 and 11. But he has finished a few of those guys, you know. So, I mean, but you're, when you're finishing cans, it's really hard to gauge your skill. The win over Tim Means was extremely impressive, but I really don't think he's going to be able to come in here and get a finish over Kevin Holland when you've seen guys like Tiago Santos not be able to finish him on short notice. Now, he has got choked out by Brandon Allen. I mean, he can get caught in a choke. Daniel Rodriguez can catch you in a choke. But I'm going with Kevin Holland in this fight. And like I said, uh, I'm rooting for the guy. I've become a fan of Kevin Holland. Next, we've got <laughs> we've got Roosevelt Roberts versus Brock Dogfighting Weaver. No, I'm just playing, man. That's fucked up. But yeah, there was a video that came out. It kind of got brushed under the rug. Some uh, like MMA reporter. There was a video on like Brock Weaver's Instagram story of like some dog that looked like it had like gotten a fight or something. And uh, somebody was like, yo, what's the story with the dog? And Brock Weaver was like, oh, man, my friend thought his dog was tough. So, we had, you know, we, we tested our dogs out. And, like, mine, you know, got the better of him. I won, you know, like. And so the dude aired him out. And he was like, yo, what the fuck? I was just joking. Why would you do that? And then you got me looking all crazy. And so that is something that is never good because that can always resurface. Once it's out there, it's out there. It can be brushed under the rug for a while, but at the same time, uh, the you know, Brock Weaver can only go so far before that gets brought back up. And on top of that, I've known Brock Weaver since before. I didn't I don't know him personally, but I followed his fighting career since before he was in the UFC. Back around the time I was interview I interviewed Felony Charles Bennett a little after, you know, Felony Charles Bennett, he was still fighting and stuff, formerly known as Crazy Horse, of course. Um, but I interviewed Felony and then a few weeks later, you know, he was still fighting, so I would still, you know, still watch following him on his YouTube channel and checking out his live fights. I remember he fought, you know, of course, island fights and such. Well, I watched whenever Brock Weaver fought Felony Charles Bennett and they fought to a split decision. And Felony Charles Bennett, you know, bless his heart, he's definitely a veteran and a legend of the sport, but he's not really UFC caliber. You know what I'm saying? He's like 30 and 36. He's not very well rounded. He's fighting like out of a car. He's, you know, like halfway homeless, and he still fought to a split decision with Brock Weaver. And just even aside from that, man, I'm telling you, if you look at Brock Weaver's fight resume, he, he it's not. It's not UFC caliber, the guys that he fought. You know what I'm saying? He's fought guys, you know, 7 and 9, uh, 8 and 2. He fought a guy to a disqualification in island fights. His last fight, he got knocked out, but it was an illegal knee. But I believe he was losing the fight anyway. Now he's going to be taking on somebody who's actually a, a, a good fighter. Ro Roosevelt Roberts is actually a really good fighter, man. Um, he's dangerous. And he's coming off of a win over Alexander Yankelev, who's 25 and 9. He's got a win over Thomas Gibbard, 17 and 7. Daryl Horcher, who, you know, is a, a somewhat decent fighter, UFC caliber. And so, I mean, Brock Weaver can win this fight. There's always a chance, but I'm definitely going with Roosevelt Roberts. I think he's fought tougher competition throughout his UFC career, possibly throughout his career before that. He had a lot of amateur experience. Um, and, and Roosevelt Roberts, he, he's looked impressive in the fights that I've seen of him. Brock Weaver, I mean, not so much. He choked out, you know, he, he's impressive. He likes to talk trash during his fights, but 
as far as technicality and skills, you know, he's got a lot left uh, to prove for me. So I'm going with Roosevelt Roberts, um, and we've got one more fight we're going to talk about, and that's, of course, Mackenzie Dern versus Hannah Cyphers. Mackenzie Dern, uh, Milf Kenzie Dern, we should say. She's, of course, had her baby recently. Um, and she's coming back to fight. She's coming back to 115 pounds, which she struggled to make this weight in the past. Now, you know, recently having a baby coming back and making this weight, that's, you know, that's going to be impressive considering she couldn't make it before the baby. Um, so, hey, we'll see what happens with the whole weight cutting issue. I almost predict she misses weight. But at the same time, Either way, she should win this fight. Like, whether she misses weight or not, she should win this fight. Hannah Cyphers is not very good, and Mackenzie Dern, of course, has all the politics in the world behind her. If it goes to a decision, good luck beating her via decision, unless you really beat her ass, um, you know, throughout the entire fight. Then you can get a decision. Uh, and if it goes to the ground, Mackenzie Dern's probably going to choke you out, too. She's got great jujitsu, uh, and she usually has a size advantage in her fights, honestly. But with that being said, Hannah Cyphers, her most impressive win was over Pollyanna Vienna, and it was a split decision, and Pollyanna Vienna really isn't that good. Uh, Jody Esquibel, she beat her, but Jody Esquibel really also, she's like 6-6, six and six, you know what I'm saying, 7-6. and six. She was, Hannah Cyphers was finished by Angela Hill, finished by Macy Barber, and before that, she really wasn't fighting girls that were UFC caliber. So... This should be an easy win for Mackenzie Dern. Hopefully she gets a submission to at least make it impressive. You know what I'm saying? Maybe be a triangle choke. You know where my dog's at. No. <laughs> but no, I'm taking Mackenzie Dern for the win via submission. I mean, maybe via decision. I don't, it don't matter. She's going to win the fight. Uh, we'll see what happens next. And you can see my predictions for the prelims and the early prelims. I'm not going to go into those and break them down, but you can see them if you want a little further in-depth uh, breakdown. You can come to the Discord. Link is in the description. Um, come chop it up with the full-time family. We'll be over there. And I'm going to be back to streaming the fight soon. I just told my landlord I'm moving. This is my last month at my place, and I'm going to be moving. So I'm gonna have I'm not going to have my roommates clogging up my internet. I'll be able to stream again without the shit cutting out all the time I have better internet so that'll be dope we'll be back to live streaming when we do like some zoom chats it's gonna be fucking lit with that being said man it is what it is let the full time family know what you think in the dis discord link is in the description and don't forget if you do donate to the channel we're going to pick a fighter of the month every month and we're going to donate half of our channel's donations to the fighter of the month, especially in times like this, where a lot of fighters haven't been able to book fights, it's really going to help them out, you know what I'm saying, just through, we're going to do interviews, all sorts of stuff, but like I said, we're really going to ramp that up once I move and all of that and get my internet settled and shit, I've been working two jobs relentlessly, I let go of one second job, got a new second job, fucking it's amazing, um, follow me on Snapchat, uh, yeah, it is what it is, man, I'm out.